Hi everyone, Tummy Trebles here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Quelle Chris record, Death Fame. This is the seventh full-length studio LP of one-of-a-kind Detroit rapper Quelle Chris, one of the most eccentric and thoughtful lyricists I think the underground has to offer these days, who spent the last decade building up one of the most colorful and uh, odd discographies in left-field hip-hop of the 2010s. And while I think it's great that over the years Chris has truly matured into a real album artist, it's often some of his most all-over-the-place LPs that do leave a lasting impression on me. Whether that be Ghost at the Finish Line, or his uh, first Innocent Country record, also his uh, one-time crossover with uh, Gene Grey. Death Fame, by comparison, though, is a lot more focused and feels like yet another deep dive into Chris's psyche in his catalog, much like his album Being You is great. But this time, the textures and attitudes attitudes brought to the table on this project are a lot darker, grimier too, and it also feels like there's less to laugh about on this album as Chris reflects on his fame, his mortality, as well as his talents and the general lack of appreciation for them. Which is funny because I think in his entire discography this LP might be one of his least accessible projects yet. I have no doubt the fans he's built up to this point will be into it, but in a way on this record it feels almost like we're returning back to that vibe of uh, the hip-hop equivalent to Saturday morning cartoons, but you're on so much LSD watching them, your brain is fried. But now we also have a very hefty helping of existential crisis to kind of pull us through all of it. The moody vibes on this record are so thick, you could cut them with a knife, you could just plunge your arm into them like a bowl full of jello and wiggle them around. Whether that be on the slow mo vapor wavy sack samples on the uh, uh, sort of interlude track, Die Happy No they'll care, which is a supremely depressing passage of this record that feels like being pulled even deeper into an abyss of some sort. There is a similar effect being brought to the table by the Help I'm Dead interlude in the second half of the LP too. There's also the Agency of the Future, which features these chilling drones, very weird distant background vocals doing this old school hip hop routine about killing hip hop. Meanwhile, Chris's rap delivery has this very deep gravelly tone to it as he braggadociously talks up his talent and his dark humor. On your mind like Lil Nas X news on <laughs> Boozy's timeline. Dead man walking, leave him pale face like Mark. Angel on my left wants no part. Devil on my right like Hark. There's a similarly cavernous and drony quality to the closing track on the LP too. There's also a Live Ain't Always Livin', which was the first taste we got of this record and stands as one of my favorite Quelle Chris tracks so far, with a lot of weary lo-fi piano loops and dusty drums. Chris delivers on this track a very simple and sad mix of singing and rapping that he nailed down pretty good on Innocent Country Part 2. Of course, Chris Keyes is in the mix again on production. But yeah, essentially this song is about just kind of making it day to day, barely getting by mentally and emotionally, and uh, just kind of wanting peace of mind. And while the delivery on this track is low key, don't let that distract you from the poignance in Chris's pen here. Because we do get like Andre 3000 levels of passion and perception, especially in the final verse, where he writes about reconnecting with loved ones and, and spits out bits of wordplay like, bottles popping off, so many lost, plenty, my memory shot. And he's just kind of rattling this stuff off like it's nothing. There's also the track, How Could They Love Something Like Me, which, which is a very odd change of pace. There's something weirdly Lynchian about it. It's uh, pretty much this sad little piano passage, very lullaby style in 3-4, some jazzy embellishments here and there. And Chris is singing, uh, not so much on top of, but underneath these pianos in a lot of ways, very wearily, uh, with what sounds like either some subtle little touches of effects, or maybe a chorus or an overdub to make it sound even more obscured than it already is. And some of the lyrics about feeling trapped or unfocused and having to hold in screams so other people don't hear them uh, certainly do add to the overall energy and ethos and, and themes of this album. So yeah, there are many dark and emotionally potent passages to this LP for sure. In some ways, I see this album as abstract hip-hop of the highest order, like going so far down that rabbit hole that some of the tracks here don't even really feel traditionally like hip-hop songs. Because it seems like Chris is more focused on creating theater 
uh, than mere rap songs. Even tracks on this thing that are easier to listen to, like Feed the Heads, for example, uh, still come off like a surrealist interpretation of a hip hop tune. As the storytelling here comes off like this very animated kind of dominance fantasy, with Chris referencing his talent, his success, uh, interviews, award shows. But then in the middle of verses, we kind of get this aside jumping and saying, meanwhile, and we sort of jump from scene to scene, from idea to idea in the track, with these really amazing but cartoony call and response refrains on the chorus, with Chris asking, if I don't do it, who can? Meaning if he's not around, who's gonna do as much for hip hop as he's going to? King and Black has a similar vibe to it with these insane loose bits of drums and bass, some detuned vocal harmonies as well. Lyrically, we get a lot of egoism on this cut, Chris essentially throwing his competition into the trash bin, all for the sake of creating this uh, surrealist image of a braggadocious hip-hop song, again, which feels part serious, yes, but then also part satire, too. There are also some feature-heavy tracks on this LP that kind of range. Navy Blue's lengthy appearance in the second half of So Tired You Can't Stop Dreaming does kind of drag the song out to and unnecessary length, to the point where I think it kind of loses focus with the general themes of the LP. Denmark Vesey and JJ Cicero offer some of the most hype features on the entire LP. They're a real tag team lyrically here. It's just that Chris's heavily manipulated vocals in between their appearances uh, kind of just don't really leave that much of an impact on the track. Really, they're the least interesting thing here. And the sky is blue because the sunset is red does have some very touching piano loops that I like a lot. Chris's very perceptive opening verse certainly makes the song a highlight too, saying how the chillest out of all my friends end up in fast lanes, greener grass dies on either side when seasons change. But the lack of variation across the track does make its six minute runtime a bit of a tough pill to swallow, even if Pink Sifu and Morif are there to break things up a little bit. There's a kind of inconclusive ending to the LP as well in my opinion, but the title track, which I think would have made for a more interesting closer, uh, does hit pretty hard. I think it does explain the general concept and theme of this record overall pretty nicely, and it also reminds me of an older Quelle Chris track too. Actually one of the first tracks I ever heard from the guy, the song Loop Dreams, which in a much earlier part of Chris's career was a song all about kind of growing into this role of being a rapper, being a creator, seeing some kind of success off of his efforts doing this. And this title song is dealing in a lot of the same themes, is born out of many of those same aspirations, but Chris's attitude this time around is in this journey to get fame, uh, fuck it, I'm gonna die trying, or I could die trying, and as a result of that, I will end up getting the attention that I have been deserving of and have been desiring this whole time. Yes, dying will be the quickest way to get that validation and that attention that I seek. You can keep your flowers, I can't eat your flowers. There's also a point where he depicts his legacy of being bitten on the neck parasitically, like a vampire by the music industry corporations. And yeah, it's grim, but that's also the general energy and vibe of this LP put very bluntly. Now, with that being said, there are some tracks here that pale in comparison to others, drag on a bit too long, don't focus on the overall theme of the record all that well. I think the closing track fails to really tie things up all that effectively. There are some issues. I think this is far from a perfect Quelle Chris record, and he has definitely put out better in the past, especially when it comes to focusing on the key concept track to track. But still, I do think Death Fame overall is a good record from Chris, and it does have some incredible high points on it for sure. And there's certainly no album he's made so far that gets quite this dark and, uh, you know, this unforgiving. That alone, I think, makes this project stand out out of all of the very quality records he's put out so far. I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Quelle Chris, uh, forever.